In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain Report, we are going to do something special for the 4th of July. And I thought that this was incredibly appropriate, especially if you understand some of the symbolism behind it. We're going to go ahead and go straight to the great lawgiver, Moses, in the book of Exodus. In Exodus 6, verses 5 through 6. Furthermore, I have heard the groaning of the sons of Israel, because the Egyptians are holding them in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from the bondage, from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Now, one of the things that I want you to understand about this, because this is Independence Day, and the word independence, of course, comes from being not dependent, the opposite of dependent, on another person. In other words, having liberty. You see, a slave has all of his basic needs met. And the reason that he has his basic needs met is because if not, then the master, the slave owner, just same Egypt, America, wherever it is, doesn't matter, doesn't matter the time, he's going to take care of at least the very basic needs because he wants the slave to be able to continue to work for him. And so a slave is not only without liberty, he is also dependent on the slave master for everything. You see, what God's talking about here in Exodus, and what he's explaining to Moses, is he says, I am going to be the one that brings liberty. I am going to stretch forth my hand, and I am going to, with my judgment, in other words, what is he implying? That what Egypt is doing is wrong. That what Egypt is doing by keeping men in bondage against their will, especially keeping them from worshiping their God, that Egypt doing that is going to be met with retribution. That God's anger is not going to be inept. That God's anger is not going to be withheld that God is going to bring judgment upon Egypt, and the result of that judgment is Israel gets to go free. He's giving Moses the game plan right out of the gate. And you'll notice that the way that he words it here is that in the latter part of that, um, that he's going to deliver from their bondage and redeem you with an outstretched arm. So this idea of redemption... It's the same word that we hear over and over again when talking about our sin. Why? Because we are slaves to sin. We have fallen into an evil, horrible situation, in our case of our own making, when we're talking about sin. And it is God that goes out and pays the price to bring us out of that bondage. In the case of modern Christendom, of course, that price was the blood of Jesus Christ. In the time of Israel... That redemption was a physical redemption, not a spiritual one. He's talking about right here, redeeming them in a physical way, bringing them out of physical bondage into a land where they can prosper. But I want you to notice something about that and remember that a little bit later in the same passage, that when Egypt, when the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, is asking why he's supposed to let these people go, The response by God is, so that they can serve me. You see, this liberty was free, but there was an expectation that followed it. It doesn't mean that it cost Israel something, in the sense that they couldn't have paid that. They couldn't have paid enough to redeem themselves from the grasp of Egypt. But there was an expectation an expectation that they were going to use that newfound freedom, they were going to use that liberty to obey God and to give sacrifice to him and to do his commandments and live as godly people. That's why he made the covenant to them right after they came out of bondage on Sinai. 
He gave them the laws and said, if you will live by these laws, you will be my people. I will be your God and I will bless you and I'll take care of you. Israel didn't always hold up their end of the bargain. And I actually think it's kind of ironic that we've been studying Daniel and him talking about them breaking that covenant in our other series that's going on. It just happened to hit around the 4th of July. But in this passage that we're looking at from Exodus, you'll notice that throughout the entire narrative of Exodus, there is this idea that God is the bringer of liberty and freedom, but he does so with the expectation that you have a duty that corresponds with that. Here's your freedom. What are you going to do with it? Make the right decision. That's how God treats it. He doesn't force anybody to obey him. He could have done that, but he doesn't. He could have made Israel all obey him, but he doesn't do that. He gave them their liberty and said, okay, here's your freedom. You have a responsibility now to use it responsibly. Sometimes they didn't. But the point is he gave them the freedom to do it. He gave them the freedom to make that choice one way or the other. And when they made the right choice, he rewarded them. When they made the wrong choice, he corrected them. And it's the exact same choice that we have now. It's really no different. I mean, the covenant is different, the terms are different, but the expectation is the same. God comes with the free gift of Jesus Christ's blood to redeem us from the bondage of our sins and then says, here's your liberty, you're free from sin, what are you going to do with it? And don't we see that as a country when we celebrate this day of freedom and liberty? There are people that use liberty irresponsibly. There are people that use liberty to do terrible things. But there are also people that use it to really, really good things. I'm a living example of that. And I'm talking about on the receiving end, not the giving end. I wish I was better at giving. People that have helped me out with my career and, and more importantly, when I got sick with cancer, there are people that have done so much good to me because of the liberty that they were afforded. And because of that, I have a responsibility to use my liberty responsibly and to help others as well. And that's the exact call that we are given as Christians. God gives us freedom from this burden of sin, this freedom to do what we're actually supposed to do. And he says, here it is. Please use it responsibly. Please do the right thing. And then instructs us on how to do that. You see, in a lot of ways, the relationship that God have, had with Israel isn't really that much different than the relationship that he has with us now. A lot of the terms are different. A lot of the, the, uh, the details are different. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to, here's your freedom, use it responsibly, make the right decisions, live the way that I teach you to live, and you'll be rewarded for it. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.